Okay, we're live. Welcome to another ladies' night. Moff has a full panel tonight. You want to run through the intros? Yeah, very full panel. Ladies, thanks everybody for joining us. Appreciate the uh, the time tonight. Uh, really quick, I'll call everybody out, but we'll just got a couple questions to do some basic intros, asking uh, your name, your age, where you're from, your uh, what you do for a living, your current relationship status, and then what made you decide to come on the show tonight. Uh, why don't we start with Melissa? Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm 33. I'm a medical assistant. I live in Iowa. I forgot the other question. Um, I just want to status. Oh, I'm going through a divorce right now. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to see what it was about. Okay. Do you have any kids? Katrina? Oh. Go ahead, Melissa. Nope, that was, I didn't say anything. Any kids? Any oh, kids? okay, yeah. I have a 10 year old. Okay. All right, go ahead. Katrina? Hi, I'm Katrina. I'm 35. I'm from Miami. Um, I'm engaged and I have four kids. And I'm a realtor. Realtor. You said four and kids? Just... Yeah, and I have four almost step kids, so eight. Oh, okay. You were the um, professional, oh, pro ex-wife, yeah, okay, so it's in your, yeah. so you're the professional ex-wife. You've got three ex-husbands, is it? Yes. Three ex-husbands at 35, and you're engaged to be married again. Yep. Okay, let's keep moving. How about uh, Rana and Allie? Hi, I'm Rana, I'm 25, I live on Long Island, so does she. Um, I bartend, I sell protein, I do literally everything. Um, Single, no kids, I'm just vibing. I love talking. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm Allie. I'm 25. I'm waitress, server, esthetician. Also like talking. You could chat for days. Single, also no kids. Never been married. But it. Live my life. Couple of Long Islanders. Okay, uh, Diana, watch your next off. Was yeah. All right. Hi, my name's Diana. I am currently 26 years old. I work at a supplement store on the side and I do caretaking on the side as well, but I'm currently trying to get into law enforcement. So that's where I'm at. I have no kids. The only dog I have. Well, that's my kid actually. So he's a Belgian Malinois. He's a year old. So that probably like three kids in one. That's a handful. <laughs> yeah, it is. But yeah, single at 26. And currently trying to get into law enforcement. So. Where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. LA, okay. Yeah, I'm a California girl. All right. Where do you want to start, Moff? I mean, where do we start? I mean, I think um, three ex-husbands is a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And engaged to, I mean, potentially a fourth. I how, did you, how did you end up with three ex-husbands at 35? You know what? <laughs> you live and you learn. Um I would say that I had a very interesting dynamic growing up between my parents. It was a pretty toxic relationship. So I thought that that was what love looked like. I thought that was how it was supposed to be. Um, I got pregnant really young with my first kid. He's 16 now. I had him when I was 18. So I was pregnant my senior year of high school. My family was like, you need to get married. And I was like, whatever. Okay. So I got married, not because I thought it was what I wanted to do, but more like pressure. It was the right thing to do. Um, turns out he wasn't who I thought he was. And he had like a drug addiction and all this other stuff. And when the baby was six months old, I like, we were, we moved to New York for him to get like rehab. And I just ended up like fleeing New York with a baby at 19 and a suitcase and the cops had to get, it was like a big thing. So I left him. Um, and then I want to say five or six years later, I found out I was pregnant again. I was engaged to somebody that I knew from high school. Um, it was also like a very toxic relationship. We were just about to break up when I found out I was pregnant and he didn't want me to keep the baby. And I was like, too bad, I'm keeping the baby. And then we thought we could work things out and we couldn't. Um, and it just escalated from there. It was a very toxic situation the whole time. And then my third one, it was during COVID. I guess we were lonely. He's in the military and we got married. I got pregnant right away. Um, I had two babies with the second one 
And then I had one with the last one. He was like, you gave two other guys babies. Why not me? And I was like, okay, whatever. That should have been like, you know, a little bit of a red flag. But, you know, I think accountability is everything. Like, this is all my fault. Like, I think anybody that's been in a toxic relationship um, that wants to heal and wants to to attract the, the right partners has to take some accountability and their part in this. So it is what it is. I learned finally. <laughs> so what were the biggest lessons? The biggest lessons were trust <clears throat> red flags when you see them, like people are who they are. So when you notice a red flag, don't say, Oh, but he, you know, he has a good job. He has a good family. No, no, no. Like the red flag is the red flag and everything else doesn't matter. Run. Um, the second one is like, just because you have kids, I don't think that means that you should stay in a toxic situation. I think it's better for your kids to see you single and happy than in a toxic relationship because then they might end up picking partners that emulate what they grew up with and they're not going to attract the right people. And then I think the third lesson is like, own your shit, take accountability and do the work, heal, and also like know your part. Okay. I'm curious, um, you mentioned toxic a couple of times and you mentioned red flags. I'm, I'm curious as to what those things are. Like what red flags did you ignore? What is this toxic behavior that you experienced and how that manifested in uh, those relationships? And the other ladies can chime in on this too because I saw a lot of head Please. nodding and yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed with the first guy was um, the drugs, obviously. And then the lying that, oh, it's not mine, you know. And I was young. I didn't know. I had no idea what drugs looked like. What kind of I drugs? Cocaine. Okay. I had never seen it in my life. Um, so I had no idea what it was. And I just believed every little lie he told me. And then with the second husband, it was more like he was an attorney. He was very manipulative. Um, and it was really hard to trust myself. He would gaslight me a lot. And I was starting to like deny my reality. And I lost myself completely. Like if you saw pictures of me when I was in that relationship, I just looked like a shell. I looked super depressed. I looked like, I just didn't look happy or healthy. Um, and then the last one, it was like a lot of, first it started with like little remarks, jealous remarks. And then it turned into like full blown accusations of stuff that didn't happen. And just very manipulative, making me delete contacts, making me, uh, isolating me from friends and family and that didn't last very long I, I waited till after I had the baby and then I was like this is his opportunity to change he didn't big surprise and I said gotta go and he was like very emotionally abusive calling me names fat ugly nobody would ever love me um just ridiculous stuff but I believed him because that was my person and that's who I wanted to be with at that time I don't know why but I saw some head nodding from Melissa earlier about the red flags. What are the, what are your top red flags? You're, you're currently in the process of a divorce. So you're kind of, uh, in a similar jam. Um, yeah, actually I kind of look up to her. not going to lie. Cause I'm on my second divorce. I got married when I was 18 to a guy in the military and I kind of followed him around for almost a decade and he was very physically and emotionally abusive. And then after I had my son, and he hit me, I just couldn't do it. I was like, I cannot let my son be raised in a situation like this and potentially turn out just like him. So I left, obviously that's a red flag, hitting women. <laughs> um, and then I met my second husband while I was still going through my first divorce. And kinda, I just agreed with pretty much everything she said. When you first see a red flag, you just need to stop making excuses for it. I think it's common for women to just like, brush under the rug and be a little more nurturing. I think especially women with children, um, they just want to see the best in people, in my opinion. And give the benefit of the doubt to the wrong people sometimes. And sometimes you just learn your lesson too late. Wow. Um, we've got the... Uh... We got the ex-wife's club on tonight. <laughs> I have so many rebuttals and questions, but I want to go around the rest before I before I get into it. Um, I'm just yeah, let's curious. Let's hear some more of the yeah, red flags from Diana, Rana, and Ali. Red flags. Um, 
red flags. <laughs> red flag, red Fire red. away. I think a red flag that I've noticed plenty is when guys will talk about nothing but the past. Like, I just, if you're stuck in the past, you're never going to be able to propel forward. If all you're talking about is bringing, if all you're talking about is like just stuff from the past, you're bringing up anything that's not current or moving forward in life. Like you're just stuck in the past and that's not going to be able to get you anywhere. No, or yeah. all of their exes are crazy. That's another one. All yeah. of my exes were crazy. <laughs> yeah. Allie, this sounds like a, can you give an example of like when, of what you mean? Yeah. So someone that I'm actually friends with, Every single topic of conversation is about how someone in his past is dirty and how he can never trust people, how his ex-girlfriend used to manipulate him, how people in the past used to be very mean to him. And I'm like, okay, but what about the people in the now? What about the current? Like, who's in your life that's bringing you up? What's making you happy now? Well, I don't trust people. I can never trust people again. I just, I'm only going to make myself happy. And I'm like, okay. I just, I don't know what... Is this he a friend of know. yours or is this a guy that you're interested in? And, no, I'm not interested in him. He's, he's kind of friend. interested in me because he tries to get inside my head a little bit with my insight because he says that I'm emotionally intelligent. Uh -huh. And then I try to give him insight and then he doesn't really listen to a single word that I say. So you're just friends? Oh, yeah, very much. I actually very recently met him. Okay. And all he's done is trauma dump on me. And I have met him <laughs> once. Trauma dump. Okay, yes, I've cool. met this man once. Okay. Why do you, why do you hang out with him if he's uh, like so negative? Oh, I don't hang out with him. Trauma dump. I don't. Okay. I don't okay. engage. So he's no longer a friend then? So he's not really a friend. He's really not a friend. I just had no other real explanation of how to call him a guy i know yeah. a guy yeah. i know a dude okay. i know okay. an acquaintance that wants to get in my pants basically <laughs> basically yeah. ever so literally yeah so so here's an interesting thought um you know playing the devil's advocate mm -hmm. do you think there's maybe any lessons from his past where he might be applying it to today uh, and it's not so much like a foot in the past it's maybe I experienced this, that, and the other thing, and I'm now eyes wide open when it comes to these areas now. I think it's a little bit of both. I think he's more so just guarded mm -hmm. in the way where he's like, I can't really trust people, but he's also not even allowing himself to let someone in or let people in to trust them, if that makes sense. Like, he's not even giving it the opportunity or the chance. Got it. All right. like any person he encounters, he's like, I know I'm not going to trust you. Well, everybody's got some baggage, right? You yes, know, I exactly. always say some, everybody's got a skeleton in the closet. Some people have a graveyard, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ali, let's hear some of the red flags from you, from your experience. Rana, rather. Um, or sorry, Rana. <laughs> I saw the name Rana. Under, okay, okay. Yeah, Rana, sorry. I'm going to switch that, actually, so we don't get confused. Oh, I see what Let's see. I think for me, it's not really red flags. It's more of the type of man that I go for. Um, and I do it on accident or I just, it must be the, like the type of man that I grew up with. Cause my dad is, abs yes, I have, if you want to call it that, I have daddy issues. Me and my dad are very much not, not it. Um, so I always end up going for the older, very much emotionally immature man that has a roster of like 15 women. And I end up finding out in the most obscure way. Um, so I, I've dealt with a couple of, I don't even want to call them old men, but like older than me, you would think they're ready to settle down. You would think we have some sort of emotional immaturity maturity but it's like it's unhinged it's how much disgusting. older than you because you're 25 is it yeah so like anywhere from, you dating? anywhere from 30 to i went up to like 39 40 like so much older it's within 15 years 15 years is a lot of years 
<laughs> I mean, sure, let's call it a lot of years, but it's not that big of a difference. Um, but, okay, so you're so you're dealing with guys that are entertaining options. They, I think I heard you say that they've got like 15 girls on the go, like they're spending a bunch of plates. Probably more than that, to be honest with you. Okay. And you're looking for what, like a husband? You want to have a family? One day. But is this the time for you right now? Like, is this in the dating phase that you're at, at 25, I you're looking for a husband? I want to settle down. I do. Okay. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and you're dealing with guys that aren't choosing you. Correct. Why is that? Because if he's got 15 options, he's going to pick his best option, right? 100%. Um, I think, again, it goes back to the whole growing up thing. I guess I, I never got the love or attention from my dad, I guess. And it reflects my dating life. So I go for the one that doesn't show love, the one that is very superficial, is very tough love, I guess. I, I never know how to word it, but it definitely is a reflection of it's something psychological. I know that. Were your parents together when you were growing up? Yeah, but there was an incident where okay. I know my mom. She might might see this but we're bringing it back up um we went on vacation to egypt and she visited one of her old friends from college and there was a little exchange and he saw it on the phone and it was like unloyal <laughs> and i'm like okay so you're faking it at one point they wanted to like break it off and i'm like okay so love isn't real you guys are faking it just so that we don't get fucked up but i'm already fucked up so if you want to like get a divorce get a divorce so your mom stepped out on that, tr like, it was a vacation or a business trip? It was a vacation. Okay, so, um, she, so, so she hooked up with an old friend. I don't know if they hooked up, um, but me, my brother, and my sister were there. My dad was here still. Okay. So it was like a family vacation minus dad, and like, I don't know what went on. You said that your dad was, like, not giving you attention. Uh, like, what exactly... Well, his love was always tied to something. So uh -huh. if I was getting A pluses in school or if I was like fulfilling his being a golden child, like yeah, yeah, yeah. if I was hitting all those ticks on his list, yeah. then I would get the praise and the love. But other than that, it was just not really any Is your good family advice. Egyptian? Yes. Is it cultural for the father to be a little distant towards the kids or even the daughters? I don't think all families are like that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I think maybe it's the way he was raised and then he just took on that way of raising us. Mm -hmm. Kind of a kind of an old school thing where it's like, you know, I got stuff to do and the kids will sort of take care of themselves and entertain themselves and the mom will sort of look after that. Is that... Is that the system? I, I would assume that's what it was because um, he's the breadwinner. My mom's a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, okay. And he's like, I'm head of the household. Like, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do what I have to do. And you guys, like, figure it out. Was he there at birthday parties and, like, during major Actually, events? Or? I have skipped several birthdays to sparkle crying because I am. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, Diana, we're talking about some red flags. What are your obvious frying pan to the forehead sort of red flags that you can't miss. Oh, don't get me started. Um, so I'm more of like a long relationship type of girl. So I'm 26. So I think from like the ages of like 16 to 26, I had two long-term relationships. So when I was from 16 to 21, I dated this guy. And then from 21, 22, I dated up until last year. And my red flags are gaslighting um if a man doesn't have you know the career or work oriented goals that they want in their life please stay away from them that's like my biggest two red flags i feel like if a man isn't ready to actually commit meaning if he has his work goals what he wants in life i think women usually tend to come last because they don't have what they have on top mm -hmm. so with that being said 
I found myself like trapped dating these two guys who weren't happy because they didn't have what they wanted in life. And like, don't get me wrong, like they were working towards it, but a lot of like that backlash came towards me because I was just trying to like help them out in like whatever way possible as far as like mental or emotionally. But I realized that if he doesn't really have his things together, you're gonna be the end of the stick. Um, so with that being said, I came to terms that, you know, now if I'm gonna find someone, this is like my third strike. I want somebody who's obviously older, has their things together and kind of just like wants to like settle down because at that point they somewhat already have some type of like sense of direction, whether that be um, goal oriented, uh, emotionally somewhat intelligent. I'd like to say, I mean, I think I read like men don't emotionally mature until they're like in their forties, I believe. So <laughs> that's just my little back. Forties. Wow. I, I, yeah, I did some research on it and I was okay. like, okay. but you know what? I do think at the end of the day, um, depending on the man that you do date, whether he's older or younger, mm -hmm. um, men and women are just two different types of people emotionally. Yeah, there's huge differences between men yeah, and women. Glad I, you said that. Yeah, I don't think, you know, forgive me guys, but I think a lot of girls might come for me for it. Uh, men and women just don't emotionally think the same. And I think a lot of the times it like burns back on women because I always tell girls, I was like, if you want to like figure things out with men, you always have to end up thinking logically and not emotionally. That's pretty sage advice for yeah, 26. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. How about that? Um, I heard gaslighting a few times. What is the definition of gaslighting? If you were to explain to somebody that doesn't understand. Gaslighting. Um, it's like, let's just say if you bring out a problem to like an individual and if you, you know, tell, if you basically tell them how you feel and then they're going to come back trying to like knock you down for it. I'd like to say like not taking accountability for what you're calling them out for. Mm -hmm. I guess like that's my best way of like explaining gaslighting. I can't really explain it what another way yeah yeah okay um, um but yeah i think that's like my biggest red flags is gaslighting a man not having his shit together and is there a is there a certain level of tolerance that you have for a guy that doesn't have his shit together like if he's younger will you have some patience or if he's older you kind of expect him to sort of be there um for a younger guy i think it just depends it for like i have to now see uh like, are you looking for a plan, like a dude to show up with a plan, at least if he's younger? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You, like, at least have to have, like, your goals set. You have to literally tell me what your goals are. Mm -hmm. And based off that, I mean, obviously, you can only get to know somebody based off how long you spend time with them. So, obviously, one person would be like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely working on my goals. But over time, if you're dating them and you don't see that their words and actions align, then that's only going to get you so far, I believe. Okay. So we've got a mostly single panel and an engaged gal as well. Okay. Moff, I got... Well, I, know. Also... So, I know. I know. Well, go, <laughs> go ahead, Diana. I, I mean, adding to, like, whatever I also said, I also did grow up in a very, like, traditional household, which I don't think is very common nowadays. Mm -hmm. My dad's the breadwinner and my mom's the stay-at-home mom. She cooks and cleans. And it's been like that since I was like born. So I think I see a lot of the ways that my dad, I mean, obviously nowadays it's a little bit different due to like the economy and things like that. You know, it's a little bit harder for a man to just provide by himself. But ideally, I would want somebody like my dad. You know, like to me, like my dad's like my best friend. I okay. actually have a harder time with my mom. Um, Where's your family from? Yeah, I was going to ask nationality. Oh, I'm Mexican. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> is that the ideal model for all the gals on the panel? Uh, be a stay-at-home mom. He's a breadwinner. He brings home the bacon. You cook it up sort of thing. Like, is that no. your plan? No. No? No. Uh-oh. Okay. We got a no and we got a maybe. We got Melissa looking up in a different... That's kind, kind of, of a maybe. Of. What about I've had both, so it's like... It's pros and cons to both. I think with the right person, it's ideal, but a lot of relationships work out that way because women feel trapped and financially 
they're not, it, they don't have financial freedom, and that's a big, that becomes a big issue for a lot yeah, of Yeah, you want your own money, right? Yeah. So, okay. I mean, if you have a man that, like, provides an allowance and there's proper communication yeah. before it happens, I think that's ideal for most women. But What do you do for a living? I'm a medical assistant. Medical assistant. That, that's into six figures? Is that around? No. No. I'm not a doctor. Just like, like a nurse. Okay. Okay. So... Um, I mean, if a guy gave you, I don't know, ten thousand dollars a month, that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, like as an allowance to take care of your needs, yeah. pick up the groceries, get your nails done, you know, pay for the extracurriculars, you know, for the kids. Like, would that work for you? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's less I mean, about. I, I it's more even, about the amount. Yeah, it's I mean, more about the amount than the the actual idea of not having your own money. Right. It's, being able, like, even if it's doing, it's not ten thousand dollars. I mean, I don't have an extra ten thousand dollars a month right now to spend on myself, so it's not necessarily like it has to be a lot of money. Just like, hey, if I want to go spend money on Starbucks, it's our money. It's not your money, and I have to ask for something. Kind of so, thing. would stay-at-home model work for all the gals if it was more than sufficient money? I'm gonna say yes. Ali, you said no, like flat out no. That's a no-go zone for you. Better have flat. your. Own. I said flat out. I was like teetering. Okay, sorry. So, Moff, did you switch the names? I switched the names. Okay, so Allie is underneath Allie. Rana. Okay, got. Okay, yeah, so good. I'll go back to. So, Randy, you said flat out no. I personally, okay. I think this is another issue that I have with dating. I always want to be in some sort of power. And I know I'm young right now and I'm definitely not established and I definitely can't. I still live with my parents. I okay. can't take care of myself as of now. But I know in the back of my head that eventually I'm going to be able to support myself. And that's always a struggle that I have. Um, men don't want to see you being more successful than them. No, I, they, I don't apparently. think, no, I don't I don't think that's that. the case. I, I think women don't want to be with men that are less successful than them. They don't feel intimidated by women that are more successful. It's just that women that are more successful aren't generally interested in less successful men. I, I don't, I don't want to go and say that eventually I'm going to be a sugar mama, but I, I can tolerate being with someone that's not on my level. Yeah. You know? but I mean, like you said yeah, something that's conflicting though, because you said that you want to be in a position of power too though. Right, so then it becomes a power struggle. Okay. Men, and you I lead, and he follows. Ideally, you're gonna have a hard time with that if you're dating guys 15 years older. Well, no, I know, <laughs> and that's yeah. What kind of 35 year old is gonna take direction from a 25 year old? That's like right. the dog walking the owner. Well, again. I, I'm not doing too hot in the dating world, so. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We're trying to get some answers here tonight. Yeah, we'll fix that. We're going to help you out here. Yeah, we're going to fix that. So, okay. So you want to be in a position of power, but you want to date older guys and you want to lead the relationship. My thing is, if I land with someone older, I'm going to need time to develop and grow. Yeah. So he's going to have to watch me for a little bit and then be okay when I get up to his level or higher. Okay. There's there's a lot going on with that. Do you think that's going to work out? Retired much? by then, so it might work out for you. Was that Melissa? I said he might be retired by then, depending on how old he is, <laughs> so it might work out for you. I I mean I whoever comes in and is older, it's going to be a little bit of babysitting. It's going to be a little bit of babysitting. Yeah, but I mean, like, how do you set that up? Because because you're fine with dealing with a guy that's older more successful i mean generally speaking he should be more successful than you because he's older so he's got more years on you yeah but you want to lead him and have him submit to you okay no we haven't gotten that far yet we haven't gotten that far yet um are you first born i am first born yeah i knew it <laughs> first born's like love to lead they but love I to also... lead but i mean you got to be in a but you got to be in a position to lead though right I agree. So maybe I should start dating down. I don't know. You can date your own age, but no, I mean, not like the thing that. about that is you're going to find yourself, uh, you know, in a position where most guys don't have a lot going on. Most guys in their early 20s are just figuring stuff out. They're in a similar you know, position as you. Right? That's why I yeah. say stay away from the guys who don't have anything. Yeah, Diane has been there. 
yeah, please, yeah. don't do it um i always said i was like if the next guy that i do end up dating marrying hopefully marrying um i definitely want him older than 10 years old like 10 years older than me or just older um as an example i mean just like how you guys were talking about how maybe you guys wouldn't be okay with like having a man you know taking care of you for example like based off like as an example the career that i want to do like law enforcement ideally i would want to like marry somebody who also has that same career in the future like i do just because i want to be able to like go to the streets and like handle things out but still come back home and get taken care of like a princess so like having to like take off the badge or having to take off the vest and like having like a man lead me because I would be so like knowing me, I would be just be so tired of like dealing with like society and like the community. Like I would just want to like have a man who's going to be like, don't worry about it. Like I got it. Are you okay with the very real possibility that you could come home with broken bones or a black eye or something like that? Yeah. It's a risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's like what I'm trying to get myself into, not necessarily like the black eye, but I'm saying like, I'm basically aware of like what I'm getting myself into. Yeah, but you're you you're in? okay with working the beat in LA. Um, so or you're going for more of an admin job. I'm going more towards like smaller department right now. I mean, my last resort would be like LA County, but ideally, I would want to work for a smaller department. But I meant like more like I mean, you'd be fine on patrol, right? Oh, I mean, you yeah. like working the beat. That's kind of what you're going for. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Interesting. But I mean, down the road, like, let's just say if I was married and, you know, I already had like a couple years in and, you know, I was ready to have children, then I think I would be okay with like stepping back. And if my husband at the time is okay and has like the salary to, you know, to like take care of us, I think I would be okay with just like raising our kids. Because, I mean, people are crazy nowadays. I wouldn't just want anybody raising my child. So you know, why not get, get taken care of? Do any of the gals on the show uh, see religion as pay, playing a really important role in relationships for you? I do. Doesn't matter. Mm, not really. Left, right, mm. shot. No. I yeah. kind of want to go back to like the older, more established guy topic though because... Okay. What do you got for so, us? So, so... I was married previously to somebody five years younger. He was 26 and I was 31 when we got married. And I personally don't think that age is a factor in maturity level. However, in that case it was, um, cause I've had guys that were slightly older than me that were super mature. And then I've had guys that were younger than me that were mature. But then I've had guys that are super old and not very mature. So, when I got with my fiance, we met on Hinge, we met on a dating app, and I was very clear about what I wanted. I said, I wanna be home with my kids. I don't wanna work. I want to work if I wanna work, but I don't wanna have to work. Like, I don't wanna have to bring anything financial into the relationship. I wanna submit to you, I wanna trust you, I want you to lead. And I wanna travel all the time, and I want you to be able to afford our lifestyle. And if you can't do it, I understand, but then you're not the guy for me. Um, and he was like, well, I want someone younger, somebody that is a good mother, somebody with a very high sex drive. And I was like, that's me. So we, I mean, our relationship is amazing. How much uh, we've older been, is he? He's 13 years older. He's mm. almost 48. I'm 35. And it's nice being in my feminine because I don't. I mean, there's certain things where, of course, like the masculine energy comes out and like the trauma, like sometimes if I'm triggered. But overall, I have to say it's very refreshing being able to trust my partner and know that he has my back and know that we're not going to be in financial trouble and know that I can get my nails done and do whatever I want to do without a problem. Okay. Um, do you get any support from your exes? Because you've got right? four kids and he's got four kids. Do you get any have, uh, support? I have four kids. Um, I get no support for the first one. I get very little like support for the other two. We're 50-50. Mm. And then the last one, I have her 70-30, but her dad's in the military. So um, he helps me with school. And then I do get a little bit of child support. But it goes to her. it goes back to her school because I pay for 
You said that you were license. married to a lawyer, a lawyer yeah. at one point, right? An attorney, but he's mm -hmm. only paying a very little amount in child support. Yes. How did that happen if you're not working? Um, so when we got divorced, I guess he wasn't making as much money or we didn't have a lot when we got divorced. Okay. All right. And you're he was an attorney, okay. but he right. wasn't, I guess, not a very good one. I don't know. I guess. Um, <laughs> and I wanted, uh, no, you've go got ahead, four kids. Question. He's got four kids. So you got a Brady Bunch type of mm -hmm. situation going. I mean, I'm dating myself when I say Brady Bunch. Just some of the girls on the panel don't even know what that is. <laughs> but no. um, but you're basically blending like eight kids in total. Um, are they all around the same age? Like, so he has a 16 year old, a 15 year old, and twin eight year olds. And yeah. then I have a 16 year old, a nine year old, a seven year old, and a two year old. So we have like all ages. You're gonna need a big house. Yeah, we have six bedrooms. He like added on to his house before uh -huh. I moved in for me. Okay, so you moved into his house. Yeah. Did he ask for a prenup or a nope. cohabitation agreement or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Interesting. Because I mean, you've been divorced three times. Yes. And statistically, the more statistically. times you get married, the higher the probability of the of the actual divorce. Yep. Yeah. You got a pretty sweet deal. You got a real I mean, deal. I mean, like I really, your like your laundry list of demands on your Hinge dating app. Like, I want to be a stay at home mom. I want to be taken care. Of, I want to get my nails done. I want to, you know, da, da 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 sort of thing. It's like that's a very long laundry list of demands. Like, did you find guys were willing to accept that readily, or did a lot of them protest? So I didn't really date a lot this time around. Like the last time I got divorced, I think I was more intentional with my dating. Mm -hmm. So I. I, I mean, I was very clear. I was like, I want marriage. I want a family. Um, I want a successful marriage, not just like, I don't just want to be married. I want like a good, happy, long lifetime relationship. And he was like, okay. I mean, maybe, I don't think, he, I think he was like very fresh out of his divorce also. And it was his first marriage and he was, you know, with her for 17 years. Um, but from what I understand, like when they were married, it was more like a roommate situation and not necessarily like a romantic, passionate, love you know it was more yeah. like convenience and who divorced who in that situation he, he divorced her okay must have been bad most guys don't untie the knot first it's yeah it's not very common initiate. he tried a couple of times um and then finally was able to go through with it like during covid and just was like i can't you know yeah so i mean i'm happy that he did I'm, he's a really good guy and i got really lucky Okay. So uh, I was going to ask this earlier, but we kind of went around the panel. So Katrina, you mentioned at the very beginning, like accountability. And then we kind of ask you like what the relationships were like and it. I didn't, I didn't hear any sort of account. I'm, I'm curious what the accountability is from your part, because when we asked you about the relationships, it was about, you know, they were drug addicts or liars and it was toxic. So I'm kind of curious about this. What, what sort of this epiphany you had, what accountability and what, what sort of part you played in the demise of those three relationships? I don't, I don't think that anybody deserves to be abused. Um, so the first one I was, I mean, I don't even count it. I was so young. The last two, the accountability that I have is staying longer than I should have and not having enough self-worth to walk away from people that were clearly abusing me. So there was nothing at all that you contributed to the relationship going sour you were a perfect angel and they were abusive i didn't do anything that was worthy of the treatment that i was getting and you said abuse right like what are we talking about when we say abuse emotional abuse what does that mean name calling yelling slamming of cabinets punching in walls um yeah. What do you think his excuse for that was? That I brought him to the point of getting yeah. there. That you packed him to that point? Yeah. Is that like nagging or? No, I think, um, I think it's more of my attachment style. I have like a very anxious attachment style. Mm -hmm. So I think that I would like be like, why are you upset? It was just a very like obvious, you could tell that, you know, 
both of them were upset and I just didn't understand why they were upset. And then I think I would keep pushing for answers. Like what, I don't know what I did. Like, let's talk about it. Let's figure this out. I want our relationship to work. And then it was like, they were out the door. I wouldn't see them for four or five days at a time with like a sick baby. And <clears throat> do you have any pause when you use the term abuse at all? That doesn't reflect anything physical to you. Um, I think emotional abuse is not, I'm not going to say just as bad, but I think it scars differently than physical abuse. So no, I think that emotional abuse is abuse. What does everybody else in the panel think about that? I would have to agree. You said you agree? Yeah. Rana? It's a different form of abuse, but it still is because it sticks with you. I think another word would probably be probably like trauma. I think that would be a more specific word, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, due to the type of person that you were dealing with, it caused you emotional trauma. Melissa, as somebody who was physically abused, how does that sit with you? I mean, I still agree. So honestly, sometimes emotional abuse, depending like how they are, because I feel like, I mean, I'm no expert, but there it's a broad term and people like, I wouldn't necessarily say name calling is emotional abuse, but I guess if it's tied in with everything else, sure. But anyways, I'm talking over myself. I think emotional abuse could be worse than physical abuse sometimes because if physical abuse happens long enough, you almost know what to expect and how to almost avoid it or like, you know, you can tiptoe around it. Emotional abuse is kind of like constant and like someone else mm -hmm. said, it kind of sticks with you a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, question for any of the gals that want to answer. Are women today oppressed? Like I'm hearing the, the term abuse a lot. Are women today oppressed in any sense? No. Okay. What do you mean by that? Oppressed, you know, held back. No. no. Okay. So there's a ton of equality between men and women today. Sounds like everybody would agree. So it's like you've got guys that are going to say and do things that'll be interpreted on the woman's side as abuse. Like one of the things that we've you know, heard before, well, he was financially abusive. Oh, okay, well, how did he financially abuse you? Well, you know, he gave me a budget and I didn't like it, basically. And it's like, well, that's not really yeah. financial abuse. I'll tell you what financial abuse is. How about living in a house with your three kids, filing for divorce, being cut off of everything, like no access to any money, and then him purposely forcing your house into foreclosure? That's financial abuse. That's some batshit crazy stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, that's the stuff that I was dealing with. This was a lawyer? That was the lawyer. Sounds like a nice guy. Was and he, he like sent me a message like I could feed the kids for 75 cents a day. And I'm like, in what world could you do that? So, yeah, it huh. was it was really like he didn't care like where we slept at night. He didn't care if they had, you know, clothes or food. It was like Did figure he want custody it out. of the kids. Is that is that what his plan was? So, yeah, like he um, I don't think he really wanted custody. But when I filed, he was like, if you don't withdraw the divorce papers, this train isn't stopping. You're going to lose the kids. You're going to lose the house. You're going to lose everything. And I'm taking your family, too, because everybody fucking hates you. And I was like, oh, my God, whatever. I let him go. I was like, do your thing. Let every turn everyone against me. So he turned like all my friends against me, which they weren't really my friends and not all of them. I'm exaggerating quite a few of my friends. Um, he turned against me and had them on the witness list for court he hired a school psychologist to say that i was crazy which is funny because my when my lawyer was we actually went to trial like i was like let's settle this you know split everything in half set everything and he was like no i want medical decisions i want this i want that i'm like okay whatever so we end up in court we go to trial his dad is his attorney representing him and he had the um family of lawyers yeah, and they wear like their emotions on their sleeve. Like they, there was no poker face. They were like arguing in front of the judge. I mean, it was super unprofessional. So he um, called the school psychologist to the stand. And when my lawyer was questioning him, 
her, sorry. She was like, do you, have you ever diagnosed anybody with like bipolar disorder? And the lady was like, no. And then they asked me, um, are you depressed? And I said, I was depressed. I had situational depression. And the judge like, is like, are you depressed now? And I'm like, no, I got rid of the situation. And like, I, everyone in the courtroom was like laughing, but it was like pretty, I was serious. Like I wasn't depressed at that time. So then um, he said that he wanted to have the kids 50, 50 and that I was unfit. And I even told my lawyer, I was like, let them do an evaluation on me. Like, I'm totally fine with it. If he needs to prove that I'm mentally stable, let's do an eval. So anyway, this, um, psychologist got discredited and the attorney looks at him and he goes, she goes, so you're agreeing to give this lady who you think is crazy 50, 50 custody. Oh, I'm sorry. He was okay with me having 50, 50 custody. He wasn't okay with me having medical decisions or school decisions or religion decisions for the kids. And he looks at the judge and he's like, yeah. And she's like, I'm beginning to question your judgment is what she said to him. So it was just like, it was funny. I mean, the it was traumatic but now that i look back it was funny like how like stupid everything sounded um he tried to appeal it and it got denied like i didn't even have an attorney i was like i don't have money for an attorney i'm gonna do this myself and it got rejected his appeal got rejected and i won so it was just bad <laughs> did you have to go through this with the other divorces my first divorce it was a little bit toxic at the beginning he wanted to, me to put my son on a plane who was one every other week to go see him in New York. And I was like, no. But then now him and I are like, cool, like 17 years, almost 17 years later, we're fine. We get along. We co-parent healthy. You know, we talk about the kid all the time. Um, the second one was the attorney. That was the shit show. The third one, it was easy. It was like, okay, we bought a house. We split everything 50-50. You take her when you can see her, and there really was nothing to fight about. Do you get any? Do you get any heat from your fiance's inner circle about the pro ex-wife Instagram? No, not at all. They think it's funny. I mean, is it I like a parody like account? Is it a comedy or? Um, kind of. It's it's like I I like to do funny reels, and I make fun of my situation a little bit because mm -hmm. like the best way for me to deal with trauma is through humor. Mm -hmm. And I can only laugh now. Like I look back and I'm like, I'm here, I'm good. But like all that shit that I went through and I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm good. I saw your Instagram so. earlier. Um, remind me, is it public or is it private? It's public. It's public. Like, would you have any issues if he said something along the lines of like, look, Katrina, um, I don't want you on social media. We don't need the public exposure. We've got a, a family to, to raise. You know, you want to travel, let's travel. I'm going to bring home the bacon. You know, you cook it up. It's not making any money. Let's shut this thing down. We don't need you driving attention. Would I do it? Would I shut it down? Would you be okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be happy? <laughs> yeah. What about I'm the okay other like gals? being private. What about the other gals? If a guy said to you, look, you know, your social media is a little too uh, risque for me. I mean, as long as... He wasn't on social media. I think they're fair. Mm -hmm. What about Rana? What do you think about that? Um, You're the supplement sales thing, right? Supplement sales, bartending. I I need my social media. I'm is it public or is it private? It is public. Public, okay. Yeah, so I, I just pulled it up. Yeah, you got a lot of uh, promotion towards uh, physical fitness, yeah? Yes, I am a bodybuilder, so, you know. A, what uh, category do you compete in? Is it is it fitness or? Wellness. Wellness. They got so many categories now, I lose track of them. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's, an, that's always an interesting thing that comes up, though, right? Because it's like the, the public, like the front-facing social media, lots of skin exposed. I get that there's a reason behind it. Does it make any money? Like mine does. This, sorry, which one? My, my social media makes money. What do you sell? Um, well I'll do like, like commissions off of like clothes, like fashion stuff. So you'll tag a piece of garment and people will buy it. Yeah. People will buy it. I'll get commission off of it. I'll get free stuff. Um, when Instagram was doing 
bonuses and reels, I would, I would get money off of that. I would monetize. And what does that now, generate monthly? Um, I don't feel comfortable saying. It's it's got to be small though, because I mean, I, I see the ad revenue, and it's usually, and I get a lot of views, and it's usually quite small though. Like it's not a large yeah. amount, is it? It depends. It depends on what you're selling. It depends how big your following is. So you can actually like make a life off of being an influencer if you wanted to. If you were, yeah, if you took it lot. seriously, you would need a lot of followers and a lot. Um, I would say it's like not a significant amount, but enough for me to like have a little whatever something to put away. You know. Mm -hmm. What about you? And I like free clothes. Does it, so does it generate anything for you? For me, yeah. no. Currently, no. Um, you don't have any affiliate links for supplements or, f or for clothes or anything like that? Eventually down the line, once you go pro, once you get that following, mm -hmm. the sponsorships come with it. But again, even bodybuilders that do it for a living have real careers outside of bodybuilding. Unless, unless you are one of the top 1% that are winning the Olympia year after year, you are not making enough money to sustain life. So it's kind of a side hobby, if you will, um, regardless of the sponsorships and the 20% off discount code that you have, you're not making enough to sustain life. And I do understand that. And that's why I'm trying to build a career in addition to chasing after that goal of getting a pro card. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay if a guy had like loads of followers on social media, a bunch of female friends even? Um, to a certain extent, I, I'm not insecure with myself, um, but it does get uncomfortable when male and female do interact to a point where it's like, oh, you're going and you're hanging out with her outside of me and you. Mm -hmm. That's crossing a boundary and that boundary needs to be set. But like if you went to college with her and you guys are friends like fine would you be okay if he said um you're not allowed to hang out with guys anymore 100 percent. i out of respect for him i he, that should be the only man i'm interacting with right some people have like some women have a real problem with it like oh you can't tell me what to do like i've known him for whatever or i dated him or i was engaged to him like why can't we still be friends see i think that's very weird because why are you still speaking to your ex-husband or uh, in your case uh, katrina i know you have kids with other men like you guys have to co-parent but if you don't have kids with someone in the past why are you still interacting with them hmm. yeah i mean that was i will be honest i did have a lot of guy friends um, and that was an issue in my last relationship. I wasn't, I wasn't um, allowed what, to talk to guys. Why did you keep guy friends around? Because I, I guess I valued the friendships and Why do you looking think they were back, friends with you? Probably because at one point maybe I slept with them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe I did. <laughs> um, so but, there's yeah. a legit reason why the, why the guy might yeah. have had an issue with that. Yeah, then. yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. And looking back, I fucked up. I shouldn't have kept friends like that. And I wouldn't now. Like if my fiance was like, delete your Instagram or get rid of this guy friend or whatever, I would say, of course, babe. Like, yeah. In what, my opinion, I just don't think that men and women need to be friends. If you're in a relationship with someone, it should be that one other person. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, yeah. there's not a lot of common Even ground. There's not a lot of common ground that men and women share outside of a, outside of a relationship, right? Other than men want to bang women, right? So it's like, you know, we call the sneaky fucker game. It's usually guys that like try to friend zone their way into your pants. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> if, if I'm just nice enough or if I'm just friendly enough or if I just listen to her shit long enough, then at some point, you know, things will happen in my favor, but it, it's, it's generally one of two things. It's either guys that she's banged before, or it's guys that want to bang her that she's not that interested in, but still pose a problem for the new relationship. Cause any guy with a head on it, like his head on his shoulders properly is going to look at it and be like, um, why are you still having coffee with this guy that you were dating two years ago? What's that about? You know, 
that's usually how it how an intelligent guy would go about it. So I always want to hear like the ladies' feedback when it comes to their experience there. They always say no man is nicer to you than a guy that's trying to sleep with you. It's true. And I you know, I don't <laughs> I'm trying to look back and like, do I have any guy friends that haven't liked me in some way? And I'm thinking it no. I don't think I have unless they're gay. If if you ever have a girlfriend that's like, oh, well, we're just friends. We can just be friends. Look her in the eye and say, hand me your phone because I'm going to text them right now. And I'm going to say, I'm horny. Let's bang. <laughs> and I guarantee they'll all respond positively. Probably. Right. I mean, if she's attractive. Even then she's again, there. I don't think guys generally try to be friends with unattractive women, right? They're usually trying to be True. friends with the attractive ones. Um, what should we go to, Moff? We got a lot going on here. Yeah, we have a ton going on. Um, Do you guys have any questions or anything that you're all stuck on when it comes to finding the right guy? You got everything figured out? Actually, no. can we go back to Katrina was talking about being in her feminine. I personally am someone that resides and like i think i've built a brick house in the masculine yes um how about we uh try and put a sledgehammer to that oh you want to break think, down some walls i, I just think want guys to are not attracted to masculine women not I, like body type body type fine but i think that for a guy to want to be with a woman, there has to be a level of attraction. And if the guy feels emasculated, you're not letting him do his thing. So it's hard for a guy to compete. You have to let him be the alpha. Let me ask you this, Randall. What do you think the top things, let's say top three things are that men want from a woman in a relationship? Um, they want someone loyal. They want someone submissive. They want someone that's like girly. Okay. So, I mean, you know that they want a feminine gal, but you struggle with that. You got that wall built around the masculine side of you. Yeah. Okay. I just, I don't know why I always feel the need to be like the alpha wolf. The, I want to be in charge. Alpha wolf? What's, what's an alpha wolf? <laughs> the leader of the pack, if you will. I don't. Allie, think... is Rana the lead, leader of the pack in your friend circle? We don't really have a friend circle. It's more so just me and her. We're like, <laughs> A crazy little duo here. Oh, it's a duo. Okay. It is. Why do you think? Why do you think Rana's inner masculine? I think she's just scared to let people in because she just assumes that everyone's going to let her down and hurt her. So she just builds up a wall so that if people do hurt her, she's like, "Oh well, I expected that." Mm. And like, I'll be fine because like I'm still here, like in my masculine. Like, you can't hurt me. Yeah, and which you called yourself a bodybuilder, which is more of a masculine and sort of pursuit, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. So I think it's coming from the inside, putting it also out to the outside. Yeah. But I mean, you're not built like a bodybuilder. You're not muscular. Not yet. Okay. We, so you're aiming well, to throw well, some weights. Before we go down that road, maybe we should have a conversation. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're talking about how do I break down these walls and become more feminine, but you want to throw on more muscle and look more like a dude. I wouldn't say that. If you look at Francie Almatos, She's Fra Miss Who? Wellness. Uh, Miss I'll look it up. Wellness I'll look it up. International. Okay, so you want to mimic this build? She has a phenomenal it? build. It's F R A N C I E L L E, and then M A T T O S, I believe. Francille Nunes? Matos. Matos. It's not coming up. She won the Olympia. F R A N C I E L L E. Yes. And the last Wait. name M. Let me pull up the exact instruments. F A R N. You know what? Let's let's make this simple. Let's go to. I'm assuming that you're following this this girl, right? Yes. Okay. F R A. And. Sorry, uh, spell it out for me again. F R A N. Matos, got it. Here it is. So she we has have a very feminine three build. Three times Miss. Oh, well, I'll tell you if she's feminine or not. <laughs> um, 
I would call that that's muscular. That is definitely muscular. That is that is but that is that more is, than what mo than what most dudes want. Sage lean in her yeah. off season. Yeah, I, I understand the difference, you know, between stage lean and uh, off season. She's muscular. Like she's got a lot of muscle on her. She's got a lot of muscle on her. The vast majority of dudes don't like that because we don't want a chick that looks like us, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I dated a, a fitness girl once, and I'll tell you something. I would never do it again. She she had way too much muscle. It was really? like it was like being with a dude. Yeah, it's hard. We like yeah. softness. We like curves. We don't like yeah. six pack abs and ripped up biceps. It's yeah. just not. Yeah. I mean, fitness like like fit like like There's a difference. fit sure. is is cool. Like I like fit women with curves, right? But as soon as you start getting into like, holy shit, that's a whole lot of hamstring and ass there, and it's all muscle. <laughs> it's like you know, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Like that's this is fair. how the vast majority of guys think. So just as a holding up a mirror and reflecting back a little bit to you, it's like you're going to limit your dating options. And if you want to settle down and have a family, you're going to limit your options in general, building your body in such a way. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And I, I hear it all the time from my father. You look like a man. Da, da, da. I'm, I, I would say you look like a man. You got to, you got a nice uh, fit physique, but if you're leaning towards looking like that, you're going to go too far. I, I can agree with that. I that's can. not what that's not what husband materials, you know, going to look like. Generally speaking, you're going to have a hard time finding that. I mean, I definitely have narrowed my window down to now focusing on people that have the same interests. Because I'm not going out to Nobu to have dinner. I'm meal prepping all my stuff, and I can't. I can't. You weigh everything up. out on a. I do a weigh everything out. Hardcore. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I weigh. I just love that out. shit. You should do that. You should find a man to do that for. They love. I would way. love a man to do that for, yeah. but even the men in the gym give me a hard time. Why? Why? I think it's because you're bitch. Because you're trying to be their buddy. They dap you up and they see you as a bro, right? Is that what it I, is? I they're, mean, like, I, I, they're like, Rana, can I get a spot? <laughs> they're not I'm exactly not asking you out. But, um, you know what I'm getting at, though. No, I know. Yeah, I, I guess I, I see where you guys are going with that. So, I mean, you said something earlier about your dad and having some daddy issues and he didn't really pay much attention, but he's offering you valuable feedback saying you're not what guys are looking for. Like you're turning yourself into a dude the way that you're building your body. It's not even that. I'll tell you another thing he came at me for. He said, I'm very loud and I am like too outspoken. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be toned down and soft spoken if I want a man to like me. That's, that's genuinely good, good advice. advice. It sounds like he's offering you it some good advice, good. Ron. <laughs> yeah. I think she just is a little defensive. I, it's not what you expect to hear. I guess. Well, it sounds to me like it's coming from a place of love. Like he's your father. He loves you. He wants the best for you. And he's, and he's trying, to, trying to offer you feedback, which will lead you to the goals that you're looking to fulfill. Yeah. Okay. Fair. But the way that he delivers it is rude. Mm, there it is. That's, that's the crux. That's, it's not what he said. You want it's some rainbows and butterflies on it before he delivers it? I mean, I... I would like to not be. But you're a strong hard. woman. You're a masculine woman. You should I be know. able to take this. You know what? <laughs> but here's the thing, Ronnie. Here's here's the thing. Like the kind of guy that you want is going to not put up with your shit, and he's going to put you in your place just like your dad will. That's the guy that you're really going to be going for, and that you're really going to be attracted to. It's not a guy that's just going to be like. Hey babe, can you like maybe not do that so much? Or like you got your pre workout powder all over the counter. Maybe like to be like clean your fucking shit. Like what the hell is this? Like you guys like, live in New York, right? Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just, that's like soy right? boy Long capital Island. of the world, isn't it? It's what boy capital of the world? Soy boy capital of the world. Oh, it's like beta male central. Oh. Uh, they called them flids. Flids? I haven't yeah. heard that one. So. I don't think I could curse on. I you. mean, like you even live in oh, a city Let's that's watch. predominantly 
Democrat beta sort of soft guys. Well, wait, wait, wait. We live on Long Island. That's a completely different animal. Okay. That's true. It is. Okay. It is. That's, That's true. But I mean, like you're at least getting exposure to guys that you find attractive then, right? Oh, absolutely. It's just, they're right. not choosing you back though. Yeah. Or you're Or you're getting guys that are like older with a whole bunch of options and it's just not getting narrowed down the way you want. It's like, it's the men with money that have their options. Right. So. You have to be in your soft girl era. Are you a good cook? Me? Yeah. I can make eggs and grilled chicken. <laughs> and meal prep. Broccoli and rice, I bet, too, meal right? rice, yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> are, you st- are you starting to see some of the problems? I... I think that you already knew them, though. In the back of my head, I know. All right. You just need somebody to hold up a mirror and tell them to you again? I mean, coming on here was a little bit of clarity, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, look, there's there's guys out there that are in the gym, bodybuilders, um, you know, doing their thing that would probably be interested in you. But you've got such a narrow window. It's like, you know, if... You know, if I'm talking to a guy and it's like, dude, cast a wide net, right? Like be successful, be competent, be influential, have a good social network, be funny, you know, like know how to make it rain, right? It's like, that's kind of the stuff that most women are attracted to. And then you can sort of like top a funnel down from that and then make a decision from there about who it is that you want to spend time with. But if I were just tell the guy like, just be really, really rich and he's a total dork, he's going to flop with women. Right. Or if he's socially awkward, he's going to flop with him. Like, there's lots of really rich guys out there. Like, look at um, uh, Vitalik Buterin, the guy that created the Ethereum blockchain. He's a he's a huge nerd, socially awkward as hell, but he's loaded. Right. So it's yeah. like you've got to you've got to broaden the scope of of the cast so that you can attract a guy that you're also attracted to, because that's the thing. Like you only want a guy to hit on you that you're already attracted to. You don't want nerds or awkward or betas you know hitting on you You only want the guys that you're already attracted to hitting on you so if you can cast a broader net you're going to have better opportunities there for yourself Rana. i mean it's not to say that i don't get men at all that's the complete opposite but it's yeah, like you, i can't get you're just not getting the guys that you want to, wrong wrong okay you're <laughs> getting the guys that you want so, so why are you single then sorry I can't get them to commit. So you can't them. get them to commit. Okay. You shouldn't have to get them to commit. Right. Well, let's talk about that. So um, you're finding guys that are attracted to you, but they won't let the other options go. It's not even that. I always get hit with the, oh, I'm not ready to settle down. Okay. How long and are you dating by that point? It's not even dating it's like a situation ship it's like we don't go out on dates we sleep together and we repeat <laughs> okay so you're okay friends, so what's the you're situation you're the friends with benefits situation friends with benefits uh, is that yeah. it? Okay. okay so you don't ever say like where do we stand like you know what are we Where's i this going? am very nervous to have that talk and i'm why? not a confrontational person i will never be the one to bring it to the table why i have a huge fear of rejection but i mean here's the thing i mean if you want something and here's where women make huge mistakes i see this all the time they're like oh well you know he's the one that should be asking for the relationship like why isn't he like asking me to commit to him but the thing is if you're a guy with a guy that has options and he's entertaining them he wants he wants women he wants to choose a woman that's choosing him, right? Like women are the gatekeepers to sex. Like you decide when sex happens. Men are the gatekeepers to the relationship. That's why men will propose, right? When it comes to something that's like a solid commitment. But when it comes to getting into a relationship from dating or I don't know, we'll call it friends with benefits or just banging or whatever in that phase to something more committed, like you want the guy to commit to you. That's what you're looking for. You want the boyfriend? Yeah. Just ask for it. Where do we stand? Like, where's this going? You have to put your foot down. Guys like it when girls are honest. I wouldn't even date somebody unless I knew that they were ready for a commitment. Like, I would be intentional from day one and say, I want a relationship if you don't. Bye. Right. 
Right, but guys don't know, right? Like yeah. a guy is not going to know on one day. Like this is this is the thing too. A lot of a lot of women miss on is that a guy that's not ready to commit is only not ready to commit to you. He could very well be ready to commit to somebody else that he thinks is a better option for him. If somebody's not committing to you, or you find yourself repeatedly, and you know, friend, it, it, we tell us this: it, the other side of the coin is guys in the friend zone. If you're the kind of guy that finds yourself repeatedly in the friend zone, the problem is you, not women. If you kind of find yourself in the friends of benefit zone, and that's a reflection of things that you are or not doing to that potential guy, because you know, like. Guys are far more willing to – everybody knows this. I mean, guys will readily sleep with women way before they commit to them. Um, a commitment for a guy is giving up way, way more because what he's doing is giving up his ideal sexual mating strategy, which is you know, sex with many women, spreading seed far and wide, having a roster, right? That's kind of been the natural male proclivity to dating since the beginning of the dawn of time. So for a guy to put that away, you have got to be somebody worth him doing that for. Uh, and that's what that's where a lot of this gets mixed up because women see a guy like, well, women don't have sex generally with guys they don't like, right? Like you gotta like a guy to sleep with. Guy don't even have to like you. Guy can hate you, but he'll still have <laughs> sex with you. You're not gonna I mean, you might hate the guy, but you still respect him, or you still like him in some aspect. You still think he might be a good dude for you. And so women think about sex as like, well, sex equals commitment, but guys, it's the other way around, the commitment, like sex first, then commitment, not, you know, commitment, then sex. I think that women need to make it absolutely clear what their intentions are if they want the guy, right? I mean, if you're just there because, you know, you want to have some fun, okay, fine, whatever. But if you're dating with attention, like, you know, Katrina said earlier, like, I'll, I'll tell the guy straight up, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and then you sort of follow through on it at the appropriate time. I mean, the appropriate time is not right away. It's not, you know, like I think most guys would be fine to hear that conversation within about three to six months. So if you've been dating a guy for like three to six months and you're seeing him regularly and he's talking to you and he expresses interest and he wants to do stuff with you and it's mutual, obviously, um, you need to, you know, lean into it and be like, hey, you know, I dig your vibe. Like, where's this going? Like, I'm looking for a commitment here. Like, I'm looking for a relationship. And at that time, you'll have to see what he says. Would Now, here's another question. Do you think that humans are monogamous? Like, no. Just to one person? Hang on. I heard a whole bunch of answers all at the same time. Let's kind of go around. I think by nature, men are not monogamous. Like okay. you said, spreading the seed. Um, can they be? Sure, but is that nature? But women aren't either, though, right? Like, I mean, no. You've got I mean, four kids I and three different fathers. Now. Yeah, like, no, I'm a super sexual person, and that's something that's very important to me. So when I got into my relationship, we were both very intentional, and we both said that sex is a priority in our relationship, and it always will be, and it always has been. And we have sex two, three times a day, every day, with eight kids, like. And I, I get dressed every day for him. I put my makeup, well, for me too, I put my makeup on. I mean, I think it's important. I think you have to prioritize that in your relationship. I'm mm -hmm. giving him so much sex that he shouldn't need it from anybody else. But okay. maybe one day he might, I don't know. Okay, would you be okay if he stepped out? No. That would be the end of it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think so. I think that would be the end. I. I am somebody who's very open-minded when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. We actually went to a swingers resort in Mexico last weekend. Um, we don't swing, we don't share. Do we like to watch? Does he like to see me in sexy lingerie parading around with you know people looking at me and knowing that they can't touch me and knowing that I'm all his? Yeah, he loves that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And guys would go up to him and be like, you know, your wife's hot. And he'd be like, thank you. Instead of guys just coming up to me in front of him. So it was it was more of like an open thing. So we're very open about that. And I told him, if you ever feel like you need to do that, like break up with me first. And he said the same to me. So we're on the same page. We don't share. Okay. The other ladies? I, mean, I don't think naturally we're monogamous at all. I think it's a choice. Kind of like love. You have to want to do it for that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. But I think that 
naturally not one person is going to check all your boxes so you're going to look elsewhere if things are rocky mm. so rana you're looking for monogamy right because you want the guy to choose you yeah even in my friends with benefits like if i'm sleeping with one person it's that one person i'm not gonna go hit 12 people up in the same week just mm -hmm. to like itch that or scratch that itch you know and i know people that do that's crazy to me but it's like one when you say time. people is it men or is it women i know girls that are out doing 15 at a time too like mm -hmm. it's crazy <laughs> So would you say that humans are monogamous or non-monogamous? It depends on the person. I think when it comes to guys, like sexually and emotionally, I think they can sleep with whoever they want. Mm -hmm. They can like not be tied to them emotionally, but I feel like girls can. And I feel like that's kind of... Do you ladies agree with that? The rest of the panel? No? No. No? Why not? I think I've slept with people that I didn't want a relationship with. Or that I wasn't attached to. Not that I'm like proud of it, but just like I think being real. Like, no, I think it's more along the line of if you're with somebody, <clears throat> and then you, you're with somebody else, because the way that it usually works, see, because men and women are, are extremely different in that regard, and I think that Diana sort of like understands this a little bit more than others. But um, when, see, because we get jealous for different reasons, right? Like women get jealous because they fear losing resources, love, and attention. Um, thousand years ago, it would have spelled certain doom for, for like you and your kids. If he took away his resources, love, and attention, food, shelter, and everything from you and gave it to another woman. So that's why you get jealous, right? Because you're more concerned about that. That's why when a guy cheats, you're like, well, do you love her? But when a girl cheats, the first thing we think is, did you fuck her? Right? Because we're more, we're more concerned about the sexual aspect of it because we don't have assurance of paternity. When you're pregnant, you know that kid's yours. Guys don't want his woman being shared with other guys. Right? So when a woman steps out, it's usually because she is leaving the relationship. She, um, uh, she, she wants to move on. They call it monkey branching. It's like, you know, how a monkey's in one tree and holds on to one tree. But before he lets go of that tree, he's got another tree in the hand and then he lets go and then he moves over. Right? So that's how women move from relationship to relationship whereas guys can just go have sex and forget about the bimbo and go home and love his wife and family like I've seen guys do this I I do a lot of coaching with high net worth individuals and I've seen lots of guys that are just like yeah I was at the conference over the weekend or you know whatever but they, why are they doing that though are they not having sex at home it's not about the quantity no it's, it's about the not variety. about the sex it's more about yeah it's more about the the aspect of variety and novelty Spreading seed. Spreading yeah. seed means multiple people. It doesn't mean having a bunch of sex with one person. The thing that women don't understand, because when you have a se when you have sex with somebody outside of a relationship, it's because you're leaving the existing one. Generally speaking, you're going to the new one, right? So you form an attachment. You you start falling in love. You have some sort of a connection, right? Guys can bang a bimbo and totally forget about her and go home to his wife, go to the family vacation, do Christmas, do Thanksgiving, and not even care. So what's your opinion? Do you think that we're monogamous? And do you think that all guys are going to cheat? And do you think a woman should stay if a guy cheats? Okay, so, so there's a lot of questions there. So yeah, <laughs> sorry. First one is all are all or do you what do you think about monogamy? Rich? Are we monogamous as a human species? No, no. Humans are not monogamous, but you can choose monogamy if you want. Okay, so monogamish. But yeah, monogamish. we're more monogamish. It's like one person at a time sort of thing. It's like you like monogamy in the animal kingdom is like they pair bond. And if one of the animals dies, then that's it. There's no that's other it. mating. That's it. Like they're done. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's, that's what monogamy is. And it's very rare in the animal kingdom, by the way. I think less than uh, four or five percent of all animals are monogamous. It's very, very rare. Um, humans are not. But it can be a choice. The second question was. Um, should you, I don't remember, should you stay? Like, should a woman stay if her man cheats on her? Yeah, I get, I get heat for this and I die on this hill. So if a man loves his wife and his family and he steps out, has some fun with a bimbo, comes home, done. There's no financial connection. There's no commitment. There's no emotional connection. 
I think that women that leave those marriages just to teach him a lesson are assholes. What about uh, the woman that cheats on her husband if her husband cheats on her? Or what if they're both cheating at this? Like, do you think it's okay for a woman to cheat on her husband? Never. No, never. if a woman cheats, then it's over because it's she's over. formed, like, she's either in love or falling in love with a guy. She's formed an emotional connection, which is different from just some exercise. So if or a woman in, feels or betrayed. In that case, yeah, then it's retribution and, it's ju it's, and that's just yeah, that, as reprehensible. Yeah. Yeah. But if so, a woman feels betrayed, and her husband slept with another woman you think she should say and you think if she doesn't she's an asshole but what if he's bringing like you know diseases and stuff like that like that's stuff well, that an I, idiot then. I mean if you're gonna do that and you should be wearing yeah. a condom but you can still i mean there's they fall off they break accidents happen like you're putting your, mean, somebody that you love at risk not really if you know how to use a damn thing i mean condoms aren't that complicated 99 percent effective <laughs> the, the 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 the, the complexity and the pushback that I get is that when, when women untie the knot, so this is interesting. So this is something that might resonate with you because you've got four kids and he's got four kids. So if, if you're married to a woman and you have three or four kids with her, 10, 15 years in, you make a mistake, you step out, you have some exercise, she finds out about it, loses her shit, I'm gonna teach him a lesson, I'm gonna get divorced, I'm gonna take half his stuff, I'm gonna take custody of the kids, I'm going to alienate him from the kids. That's usually the path that it goes down. Okay, so now you're divorced. You've got your money. You know, you've got custody of the kids 60, 70% of the time. So you make most of the decision. He sees them every other weekend on Wednesday for dinner. Now you've, now you've basically taken half the man's shit and the, and the things that matter the most to him, his children, and you have full control over them. And he gets to see them only when you say that it's okay for this. Him. Now you start inviting a new man or a new man into the kids' lives. You know what the most dangerous thing is to little girls? Oh, yeah. Non-blood relatives in mm -hmm. that household. So if you've got a small girl and he's got sons and he's obviously not related, like the reason why brothers and sisters don't get sexually involved is because that creates problems genetically down the line, right? Like you need diversity for society to grow and for humanity to, to prosper it's it's why like teenage kids usually get so disagreeable with their parents by the time they hit like 13 14 15 like they're just assholes i think it's because a thousand years ago they they wanted to move to another tribe to go and scatter seed and, and spread genetic Start diversity in that sense because otherwise you end up with problems if, if brothers and sisters so brothers and sisters are repelled now you've got non-related blood in the same household I can't tell you how many women I've talked to that I dated after I got divorced where it's like um, my stepbrother raped me, my stepfather did something, that, like, like some version of that. So now you're punishing the guy that loves his wife and his family, made a mistake, had some exercise, she untied the knot, has custody, alienates him from the kids. I think these women are assholes. You know, if I'm being but I think that's honest. a very extreme circumstance because that certainly was That's the way that it generally goes though. But in my case, I have 50-50. I was very fair. I co-parent equally. I allow, I've never said- Well, we're only said, hearing one side of the story, you know, in fairness. Okay. Aside from that, I think it's a little hypocritical, though, that you say if a woman does the same thing, then it's done, it's over, you should just leave her. And because she has an emotional connection. But what, if she, but what if she doesn't have that emotional connection? Women don't step out of marriages just to have sex. Okay, but what separates the physical from the emotional is he's done. You ruined a family and you're bringing in stepchildren and stepwives. And no, but he's, no, but he's coming home. He, he loves his wife. Stay. He loves his he kids. He doesn't want to break it up. He's doing Thanksgiving. He's doing Christmas. He's going to the wedding that's on the calendar. Okay, he's not changing like, anything. What, what if the wife still wants to stay? She just realized that she fucked up. It's an absolute no for you, but you're willing no, to break up the is, family and do the same thing. This is the difference between men and women and how they think about sex and how they perform sex. A woman who has sex with a man is still subconsciously communicating that even for a split second, because we're still primates at the end of the day, even for that split second, this is her best option as a man. And she is willing to risk essentially being impregnated by that man because women are the receivers. Right, so but that's if she's using a going. condom, right. <laughs> she can't get pregnant know, like your It doesn't like matter. It doesn't matter. It's a hypocritical thing. It's not hypocritical. Men yeah, and women I, don't have men and women don't have sex the same, and they don't have sex for the same reasons. Women are programmed to have. Hold on, 
women are programmed to have sex with one man. They are programmed to mate with their highest, most valuable guy they can get and have his children and have his children and only his children. And men are programmed to spread seed with multiple women so they can have as many children as possible to ensure that their bloodline stays intact long after they're gone. We have sex with two different reasons for two different pur- purposes in two different ways. It's it's just different. It's not the same. That's that's the mistake that women make is they just can't see it from that lens and they don't understand it. Like there's very few women that actually get it. Is a mistake, and I feel like if you're willing to take accountability, men and women aren't the same. But men and women aren't the it's same. It's a different like, mistake. It's not a mistake. It's having different. having some exercise with a bimbo is not the same thing as a hookup with a guy that you used to date or were engaged to or were in a relationship with for a number of years. Or just in general. Women don't like hookups in general, period. I, I mean, how many times I've I, I mean how many I, times I like I've gone I was gonna say I've had one night stands and like I thought we both while you were in a committed time. relationship? No, no. no. That's different. When you went out while, seeking for a one night stand, you said I'm looking for hookups or is it just something that kind of just happened? Oh. I would say right, it but happened. it never I happens mean, in a committed relationship unless right, you're leaving that relationship. Saying, That's the point it, that I'm making. A guy what can be in a committed out? relationship with his wife, go out and have some exercise, forget about the bimbo, come home and love everybody exactly as things were. Women don't have the capacity to do that. Right? But he, like, when a woman steps out on her man something. sexually, she is choosing another man over him. Because of the way women have sex and the way sex is tied to the emotional bond that they form with a man, it's forever changing the relationship with her husband or boyfriend or who she's claiming to be committed to. She'll never see him in the same way. She'll never respect him the same way again. She'll always see him as the second place guy that she stepped out on and screwed another dude. I have to disagree. You struggle with that. Okay. Yeah, I disagree, I disagree totally. I feel like a mistake is a mistake. And Are men and women that. the same? No. No. Have you ever then you can't hold them to the same standard. Yeah. I'm not trying to hold them at the same standard. I'm just saying no, but you're calling it hypocritical because you're using the same standard. Because how how are you not an asshole for leaving a woman and separating a family? And you're not leaving. Separate. We're not doing that. You're not leaving. You said the relationship will be done, so you would be breaking. If up the, the family. woman is the if one that steps out. out. But if a man steps out, the woman that asshole. If she leaves with yes. the kids. And- I don't know. I what if she's not happy? It's longer right. for a guy to like step out of a relationship than it does for a woman just because women, we're just naturally like we think about everything, whether that be like our emotions or what we're going through. So for us to actually like step out of a relationship, we've been thinking about it for like the longest versus like a guy, he can be hooking up with like a girl, like a random trick and he'll still go back home to like his wife or his girlfriend or whatever just because it was a hookup literally like i know. never left anyone for another person i always left for myself i've never left for another man agreed. i mean agreed. which we yeah, had uh katrina and i both have agreed that we have slept with people and not had that emotional connection and wanted the opposite of what Raina wanted. while because while we you were not no... in a committed relationship it's, I guess it's, I'm just not, I it's just it's just it's just called promiscuity but if you're in a committed relationship that's a different story yeah rich real quick uh yeah. we had we had somebody pop in backstage uh lynn do we want to let her up and ask a question really quick and pull you yeah. up yeah bring her in let's see what she's got i don't see uh, any video but uh lynn you're on yeah hi i just wanted to say that i think you guys are totally deluded women like can like step out on their husbands and like have no intention of like leaving the marriage at all i know people who've done it explain what's your basis for that well i've been married for like uh, 20 years i have friends who've been like married they step out and they still have no yeah they have no intention of leaving the marriage are they still having sex with their husband yeah does the husband know that she's doing this of course not Okay, so well, I don't think like the men are going to tell their wives either. You don't think the men are going to tell their wives either? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, no. Generally, These... men and women are not the same a hundred percent, but there are certain times where they cross paths, and unless you've experienced it, then you really don't. Like, we're not yeah, going to experience you're, it from you're... your side, and you're not going to experience it from our side. Yeah, but we have science. Deluded. On our side. 
think that no, women are, no, are it, capable yes, of having it's not it's not women. it's not delusion Lynn. see the thing is, is well, that yes, there's is. a gen- there's a general rule about this and an exception to a general rule doesn't disprove the general rule Okay, there you Just go. because you've got a couple of friends that there have done are, it. There are exceptions to the rules. You yourself okay. have used the example in the past of like the um, the guy who just got a, out of prison and mm-hmm. women are like throwing themselves at him in the bar. Okay. And that's for like a short term relationship. The whole okay. the idea that women can have short term relationships versus long term means that like they can have like sex without um, being in love. No one ever the guy that you want to just like sleep yeah, with single, one night, you don't want a phase. relationship with him. But, Lynn, that's just a promiscuity phase. The other girls talked about that as well. That's 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 different. If you have a boyfriend, I don't know why this is confusing. Time. Well, I don't know why you think that women can't have relation uh, can't have sex without any emotional attachment. We just talked about that. They women do it all the time don't. in the promiscuity phase. But if they're in a committed relationship to a guy that they're in love with and they're raising his kids, it's very unlikely that she's going to be interested or acting on sleeping with other men. That's if not they my do, experience. it's because they're leaving the relationship. No. That's, like, that's, so that's not my experience. There's an okay. Yeah, right? Because you can only think of it through your own lens and your own experience. So that doesn't disprove anything we're saying. That's just your experience. So your singular experience doesn't disprove well, the most that you can say is that some women, some women, like they're looking to like leave the relationship. No, we can say not most. All of we them. can say generally. We can say in general, on the balance of probabilities, it is this way. Are there, Lynn? Are there women that are married and step out on their husbands? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it's not generally the reason why they're doing it. They are generally doing it to leave the relationship. When women cheat on their husbands, it's because they generally want out because they're done. The only reason why they and Where's your stay, evidence for this? Have you read any evolutionary psychology books? No. You've have sat you? down and had a glass of wine with your girlfriends and shared some stories. Of course I've had. I've read them all, Lynn. Come on my show with your stupid questions. Oh. There's always... Try. I just want to chime in and back you guys up because even when I'm in my little friends with benefits thing, it's only that one person. And once I move on and like sleep with someone else, I have no interest in sleeping with anyone else. It's like that one person. That's generally the way that it works. I'm the like, same exact, chosen that guy. I'm the same way. Like when she I'm was... single, like I'm just out here. I'm generally not like sleeping with multiple people, but like. If I'm, you know, interested, I have a connection with someone and we sleep with each other, we sleep with each other, but I'm not like seeking sleeping with other people. And then right. if I'm with somebody, like, and if I have that interest towards that someone, even if I don't like have an established commitment towards them, like, okay, we don't have, um, like, you know, boundaries, whatever. Like I, if I'm interested, like my eyes are locked in and I, let me ask you a question. Do, do you think that promiscuity in that sense is good for you? Over the long term? I mean, in the long term, no. I, I, I would say yes, in a way, because why yes? If it's something that you want to do and you enjoy, then do it. Because then, let's say, if you are in a loyal, committed relationship, situation, whatever, mm-hmm. but you already did what you wanted to, then you're not going to have questions in the long run about wanting to do it because you did it. I heard, I heard yes. Somebody said yes. It's damaging. I think, I mean, so I, I agree with what Ali is saying to a certain extent, because I don't have any curiosity as to what else is out there at this point. And I've had plenty of experience and I know I'm not missing out on very much. Um, but is it damaging long-term to be promiscuous? Absolutely. Every time you have sex with somebody, it's an energy exchange. So you're taking on their trauma. You're taking on their bullshit. You're taking on all of this stuff. And I think it can be really damaging. But also, if you're having fun and you're able to disconnect, I don't know. I think that looking back, am I proud of everything that I've done? Absolutely not. But would I change it? No, because I am who I am because of it. So, Right. Like, I have regrets. Like, yes, I've slept with people that I, afterwards, I was like, okay, that didn't really do much for me. But you know, 
now I'm like, okay, it just, it doesn't really affect me personally. I just kind of keep moving forward. I think aside from, you were saying it's like energy exchanges and taking on their trauma, whatever. Men don't consider that if it's a one night stand, whatever. But also men don't want, and I hate to play like pick me girl right now, but like something that's quote unquote ran through do what you must with that. I know you guys could dive into that one. Is there a is there a notch count that a guy might have that would disgust you or turn you off? From I don't a, know. Ever from, like a, from a commitment or a husband yeah. type? Katrina said no. Diana? Like as far as like sleeping with other people? Well, if we're talking about something over a long-term basis, even husband type of material, is there a notch count that would turn you off? That would be like a no-go zone for you. If you found out he slept with, I don't know, a thousand women. Uh, my whole rule is I don't want to know. Okay, so it's just better. So it doesn't matter then. Yeah, no. said, yeah. Melissa? Yeah, same. I just, it's not something that I think needs to be talked about. You don't want to know? What about Ali and Rana? Yeah, no. I don't need to know. You don't need to know either. Past um, is the past. I think ignorance is bliss, but also it would itch the back of my mind. I need to know. I, I want to know, but I don't want to know, you know? Well, you're the you're the masculine one with the walls around you, so that's not totally surprising. It might actually turn me on, actually, because I'd be like, oh, he knows what he's doing. That's, I was actually going to mention that, so thank you for bringing that up, Katrina. Um, would, it, would it surprise you that notch count matters to men? No. Oh, no. no. My fiance is like, I don't want to know anything about your past because I just don't want to think of another guy being with you. Mm. It doesn't surprise me, but it always cracks me up because, like you mentioned, guys will go fuck these bimbos and like go home to their wives. Like, obviously, someone's a bimbo, so mm. <laughs> like someone's gonna end up with that bimbo. You know what I mean? Like, and I think if we're honest, older women have been that bimbo for somebody, and. You know, everyone has a past. I just don't think it's really pertinent information for a long-term relationship. But. Uh, well, it's pertinent from from the sense that if you're if you're going to take a woman seriously, you don't really want to be with a woman that's been with a lot of dudes. Oh yeah. Like you know, like you know, Katrina said, like you take on a lot of stuff during that time, in many senses and regards. The other interesting thing that they came up with when they were looking at um, divorce stats and the dynamics is a woman that's been with more guys has a higher probability of ending that marriage and cheating on the guy. What right? was the reason for that? Well, you're not going to get a straight answer if you survey the women in a study like that because women put a high priority on reputation management. They don't want to be slut shamed. They don't want to come off as uh, being less valuable. So I don't think asking them that question, unless they're hooked up to a lie detector, is going to be an accurate answer. But if I were to speculate, the reason for it, I think, is because, I mean, if you've been with 40 guys and you get married to number 41 and things aren't going your way, you've already been through 40 guys, so who cares? Yeah, Let's go to more. 42. But who keeps count? Like, who? Yeah. I'm not like, count. oh, today I slept with this person and 10 years ago I slept with this one. Like... I don't think that you can get an accurate number unless you, you can't count, right? I mean, you can sort of assess somebody's past by their lifestyle. Like a woman that's been married for 15 years has probably got a very low notch count. You know, Let me tell you about the 20. women that have been married for 15 years that have cheated on their husbands with people in between. Well, I know those two. Well, you're friends with Lynn then. No, well, no, no. You know, <laughs> same friends. Like this too. No, um, I don't. They're not my friends. I'm telling you that I know of people. I know that, that women do that too. Yeah, yeah. It's just like this, and I'll I'll say this last thing because I think we're starting to come up on time. When we talk about. I, I'm not in. I, I don't. I don't believe in the whole like energy transfer and like traumas. And if you fuck somebody, then like you're gonna see like the life through their eyes. I don't. I'm not in. I don't buy into that. But what I do not understand. That far. But what I do understand is it has to do with oxytocin and the chemicals and how they're released in the brain. And you also imprint on them. You have alpha widows, which is another problem. You have more baggage, you know, that comes with that. Like he hurt me, he did this to me, he abused me, he pushed me down the stairs, he punched me, he called me names. All these different guys do this, and it's like you know you have all this. 
baggage that sort of comes along for the ride with every guy that sort of shows up. And that's why these, these types of relationships where she's been promiscuous don't generally last. They're, they're certainly higher risk. Right. Well, if we're just talking about the physical, I mean, yeah, all the trauma and baggage that comes aside with multiple relationships, all that stuff aside, if we're talking about just straight, you know, if a woman was promiscuous, let's say she had 40 or 50 notches, she was never in relationships. If you think about the way the brain works and the way that over time, just like any other drug or any other chemical reaction in the brain, whether it's caffeine or it's nicotine or it's alcohol or it's cocaine, doesn't matter. Over time, like the first time you do something, it's going to hit you the hardest it'll ever hit. You'll never get as drunk as you were on one beer as you on the first time you ever tried beer. And over time, you develop a tolerance. You develop a, you know, that's why over time, really heavy drinkers, they've got to drink instead of five, they got to drink 10, they got to drink 15, 20. Caffeine, you develop a tolerance to it. Over time, you need more and more and more for the same effect. And so what happens is the more notches a woman will rack up, the more time she will give that energy to a guy or that guy, that, that, chemical reaction will occur in her brain it hits less and less and less and less until eventually it's not really hitting at all so there's a huge difference between the second first you know first second third time and the 41st 42nd 43rd time where that chemical that pair bonding chemical the love chemical of oxytocin is now so tepid and is petered out to a point where she no longer cares about this guy she's sleeping with because she doesn't have that chemical pair bond reaction that she did when she lost her virginity or maybe it was her second boyfriend in college or whatever that might be so on a long enough timeline with a long enough notches it absolutely does have an effect on your brain chemistry and how every guy thereafter has an effect on you that's my personal theory <laughs> you're getting a round of applause from rana yeah well, any, any feedback on that yeah i mean again i just I don't agree. I mean, maybe I haven't spoke to the most people. My number is not anywhere close to 40, but, um, like, but the husband I'm divorcing now, I mean, our sex life was great. If that wasn't an issue. I think he's one of the best partners we've ever had. We, like, you learn your partner once you're with them for quite a bit of time. I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like he was the best. I don't feel like it was worse. I feel like he's way better than my first, second, third, fourth. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Why would you divorce the best you've ever had? Because of, I mean, anybody that's gone through a divorce knows that it's not just one thing that makes you file. Like it's mm -hmm. little things that snowball and they stack up. That's what happened with us. That's the thing though, right? I mean, like you get to the point where it's like, okay, it's five, 10, 15, 20, 20. It's like, you know, at some point it's just like, if it's not going well, or if it's not going the way that you want it to, it's just, well, we'll go to number 28 and see what happens with number 28. Maybe that one will work out, right? That's the, that's the issue with it. Like, that's why throughout history, a woman's virginity was so prized. That's why when Genghis Khan and Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great conquered countries and cities, they would, they would kill off the men of warring uh, age uh, or put them into slavery, and they would keep the women as war brides. And have children with them, right? Because women are valuable in that sense. Um, a woman's virginity is highly prized. So that's why you end up with these notions of um, problems that come with big notch counts. But anyway, uh, we're kind of pushing into overtime right now. We should probably get it wrapped up. Um, you want to do some uns unsolicited feedback, Muff? That was my unsolicited feedback right there. I don't have anything in particular. Um, yeah. I would have loved, we had a lot of panelists on. I would have loved to dive yeah, a, a little more into which one wants a busy one. So everybody here is welcome to come back on a future show. If you'd like to come back, just let me know. Yeah, um, just DM off for that. Yeah, let me know. Or if sometimes where if I need a last minute fill in, I'll ask previous guests. So if you see a DM from me, if you, uh, we didn't scare you off too bad tonight, you're just willing to come on again. We'd love to have you. Oh, and if Lynn wants to have one of her girlfriends yeah, stepping Lynn, come out of her marriages and let's come. She can leave her camera off. I want to hear all about these stories and these, and I would these love uh, to come back on. experiences. I think it would be an interesting conversation there, too, because I'm so wrong. Yeah. I think that'd be a great one. But, uh, yeah, gals, thanks for uh, joining us. You've, um, it's a little bit busier than a normal show because we don't have five. It's usually a lot smaller. But yeah. we got down some rabbit holes on this. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.